So, who is Michel Jotadia? Well, he first tried to seize power in CAR in 2005, but his attempt to oust the then president, Francois Bozizé, failed. Jotadia went into exile in Benin, where in 2006 he was arrested. He was only released after promising to make peace with Bozizé. After rallying his former supporters and setting up the Seleka rebel group, Jotadia signed a peace deal in January last year and was appointed defense minister. But by March, he'd resigned. He launched a fresh coup, this time forcing Bozizé from office. Well, joining me live from Washington, D.C. is J. Peter Pham, director of the Africa Center at the Atlantic Council. Peter Pham, so no confirmation yet that Michel Jotadia will step down. But do you think he will move aside? And why is he making this decision now, do you think? Well, he really has lost whatever minimal base he had in the country. The Seleka movement, which the rebels who helped drop, bring him to power, he subsequently dis fell out with them and dismissed them. That's what actually helped precipitate the beginning of the violence at the end of last year. Uh, so he no longer has their support. He never had the backing of the predominantly Christian majority from the southern part of the country. So now he has no constituency. He is actually an obstacle to any progress toward a new transition to a possibility even of reconciliation in this country. And so most likely he's packing his bags and the summit will be the end of him. Yeah, I was going to say, what about the support of neighboring African countries, particularly Chad? I mean, regional leaders, as you say, meet to discuss withdrawing support for the beleaguered president. Yes, and Chad in particular is very important. President Idris Deby of Chad uh, not only was an ally of the deposed president, Francois Bozizé, but Chad is one of the few countries that's actually got uh, uh, something in this fight. It has put troops into the Central African Republic as part of the African force to try to restore order. So they certainly have influence not only as a neighbor, but also as a country that has put its own forces in harm's way in the middle of this chaos. Uh, but the Central African Republic has had a long history of coup and counter coup. So will his resignation resolve the long standing political and religious issues that just won't go away? Well, two points, Jordan. I, I agree completely with you. The, the country has had a very tragic history. This is a country where national identity was never consolidated. State institutions were never built. It's now had six heads of state since independence. And of those six, five shot their way into power. So that's hardly a record to build upon. However, removing Michel Chotodia at least opens the way to something else, a transition of some sort. But they need a very serious process of national dialogue to some of the religious leaders, both Christian and Muslim, have actually been making some very heroic efforts in this regard. Those need to be supported, but they do need a transition. The, the worry, however, that I have and I think others have is that the African force that's being talked about, 6,000 troops, in a country the size of France and Belgium put together is wholly inadequate for the task at hand. And so the international community really has to decide whether it really is willing and capable of stepping in or whether it's going to permit a country that's located strategically in the heart of Africa, bordering on a number of very difficult areas, South Sudan, Sudan, Chad and other places, to simply slide into uh, chaos. All right, uh, Peter Pham, thanks for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.